All right, so this is my 29-gallon Oceanic BioCube. Uh, myself, along with one of my friends, just got done doing a lot of modifications to this thing, and I'm going to try to give you a walkthrough of what we did along with some detailed footage so you can get a better idea of uh, how it used to be, what's going on. Uh, I, I watched a lot of videos on, on YouTube and everybody that, that had, had done mods of these things. Uh, didn't really go into quite too much detail about what was going on and how I got from point A to point B and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, I guess that's basically the, the, the premise of this video and uh, we'll get to it. So this is a shot of the back three chambers uh, on the factory system. If you look to the bottom right, uh, you can see the overflow where the water goes in. The factory system has a factory filter that sits there that has some activated carbon. Uh, the middle section houses a bunch of bio balls and then it goes under there creating a type of bubble trap through a sponge into the factory pump which puts water back into a factory line lock system which I'll show you a picture of here in a minute. Uh, we did away with all of that and um, going into the first section I just have a little media bag with some carbon there. Uh, the middle section uh, there's actually two false floors in there. The first one you can see and then there's another one uh, probably about it's basically down all the way at the bottom. I've got some live rock in there uh, and then on the third section we used a eShops Nano overflow box. Uh, works pretty cool so the water flows in like it usually does and then when it gets uh, up to a certain point um, which we have the overflow box it drains in there it goes through the YouTube that you see there into the back and then it drops down into the sump. So let me see if I can get a better shot of that. All right, so this is a close-up of the eShops overflow box. Uh, it goes through YouTube into the back here. And um, all there is is just a little, uh, just a little filter back there, and then it drops down behind the tank. You can see a better picture of it there. And um, eShops recommends that you go with a hose that's a quarter inch bigger than the bulkhead. So the bulkhead that comes with this is a three quarter inch, so we use the one inch drain. Drops all the way down there and then into the tank. All right, so this is an overall shot of the sump where you can see the drain coming down on the left, passing through the baffles, and then it goes back up on the right. Uh, you can see all the electrical here as well and what we did for a lighting system uh, to grow the Cheeto. Uh, so let's take a closer look. Uh, show you exactly what's going on. All right, starting up top here is the electrical. On the right is the ballast for the metal halide system. I've got a 150-watt uh, uh, metal halide bulb and then two Atenic T5s on either side of it. Uh, that's just the electrical for everything, for the power heads and timers for the lighting, so on and so forth. Uh, the top left there, you see the drain. It drains down here. And we have a ball valve there to control the flow of the water going into the sump. Got a couple of pieces of live rock, and then this is also the chamber that houses the skimmer. Uh, there's a skimmer there. It is the Cyclone, I think Cyclone 100 skimmer from Petco. Um, not really too, too big on the system. Uh, it's actually a hang on the back uh, type skimmer, so you can see that we use the hose there. Uh, just to kind of guide the water down to the sump just for, for noise purposes. Uh, it actually does a, a, a decent job, but it, it's not one of my favorites. We just kind of had it laying around. Uh, so drops into here. You can see at the bottom there is a very small, probably half inch section there acting as a bowl trap where it comes up into this middle section. Uh, this middle section is act, acting as a refugium. So you can see we've got some Cheeto in there along with some other pieces of live rock. And then it goes over this bathroom here into the right and this houses the return pump to get the water back up into the main display. Uh, the pump we went with is a Eheim 1250. I want to say it's th like 320 gallons per hour. Uh, it, it's plenty f for this with the, with the head loss uh, going up to the tank. Uh, I've got a line drawn there for my max water level in case the power was to go out. And it uh, comes up here got a, another ball valve there to control the flow which is, uh, is wide open we're getting at everything it has and then it goes back up through that hole 
Uh, we drilled this hole a little bit bigger because I do intend on adding a auto top off system to this uh, just to kind of cut down the hassle of adding water every day. And then we just have a standard just heat lamp style light here growing the Cheeto. It's a 6500 Kelvin temperature which is uh, not daylight but it, it does very well growing everything. Um, this is just kind of overview of the sump and everything that's going on down here. I try to make the electrical as, as clean as possible. Everything's zip tied. There's no way anything can drop in there. Everything's strip loop, of course. And uh, that's basically the main overview of the sump. So coming back up top here, the half inch line comes up out the back through the top. It loops over and then actually attaches to the factory bulkhead right there. Uh, we just have a zip tied on. You can't really use a a uh, hose clamp unless you were able to find one that was stainless steel um, for rusting issues. Uh, that's that's basically it though. Uh, we've got two uh, 480 Corellia power heads in here. There's one, there's the other. Uh, as far as the overall tank goes, uh, this tank's housing mostly soft stuff. Got some others in here. Got this nice clam. I'll get you a close up shot of him. Uh, he's just a dirt clam. Those colors are great. I actually got him when he was much smaller and he's grown quite a bit now. Uh, got a bunch of zoas in here. There's a true perk clownfish. Have a Bangai cardinal in here. Some frog spawn. So I'm get you a close up on the zoas over here. Uh, the ones on the right there are Iareus, and the ones on the bottom left are called Dragon Eyes. My skunk cleaner shrimp cleaning stuff and then those uh those clownfish are hosted in this rose tip and enemy here uh which is cool they hang out in there a lot uh so overall impression of everything we've done so far is uh is it's pretty high uh <clears throat> future plans would be I, I, I do have the stock hood for this and i want to put the hood back on so we're going to be um sometime in the future upgrading to led system do away with halide for uh for lighting purposes and for heating purposes actually uh, but everything right now is uh, is pretty great. The original reason why I wanted to do this was because the uh, factory filtration on on these systems is is terrible. Uh, the factory filters they give you are just very very restrictive. Uh, keeps a lot of stagnant water in those middle compartments. Uh, nobody likes bio balls. They're they're okay, but they they tend to be nitrate factories unless you clean them all the time. Uh, we didn't really want to stay into that, so. Um, so far, so good, man. Everything's cool. We don't have any leaks. Everything's awesome. Uh, everything's looking good. And I uh, kind of look forward to getting those LEDs done so I can get the hood back on this thing. And um, I guess that's it so far. That's my 29 body view. If you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to ask, and I'll uh, do what I can to answer them for you. Thank you.